hello guys uh, good evening to everyone in this video i'm going to explain what are all the interfaces available between the plc and the cnc or nck we will see, we will tell plc nck okay so uh, for example i'm pressing cycle start on siemens controllers so that time what is happening on the controller which type of signal is going and where is going how the data is getting transferred like from MCP to CNC and how it is getting operated how it's processed so for this all questions you will find the answer in this video so let's go to the video first of all I'm just giving a cycle start from this MCP this is a machine control panel okay so from MCP uh, I'm giving cycle start so now machine will cycle start how how it is happening so we have PLC inside the this cinematic controller. We have inbuilt PLC. So that PLC is going to organize our control functions happening in the CNC machine for all the functions. So that PLC is going to control. Uh, let me show the PLC interface structure. So this is the PLC interface structure. Uh, to enable the user to in influence the system and interface is provided so they are pro providing one interface structure okay if you want to influence the system or modify the values or variables so you can use the interface like uh, we can uh, use it use it like bit byte word or double word formats for example if you want to activate db31 and dbx0.0 then you can use the PLC, in plc interface structure user interface structure okay so these bits are nothing but um, we can communicate using these bits with the nc drives hmi like that okay so these are all the communication bits i'll show you i'll show you later okay so see this is the interface structure we have periphery devices like mcp machine control panel so from machine control panel we are uh, we are uh, sending data to the plc user program we are not directly sending data to the NC. So NC is not going to get any data from MCP. What's the function of NC? NC is going to move the axis. NC will detect the any axis abnormalities and everything uh, about the axis only. Okay, not, this is not going to uh, direct the alarm on periphery devices like that. Okay, so we have a PLC user program here. This user program is controlling the MCP signals and PLC user interface. Okay, from PLC user interface, we are controlling NC drives HMI. See, here they are saying the interface is used to control and monitor the NC HMI drive areas of the system via the user PLC. So this is the user PLC. Using this user PLC, we are controlling NC drives HMI. These three things we are controlling using PLC okay so in this user interface we have the data blocks so these are the data blocks we have the data blocks using the data blocks we are controlling the nc drives hmi we have separate separate um, separate purpose data blocks okay let me show that so this is the interface structure this is our plc user program and this is nc side okay nc hmi drives First is um, I'm just I just want to display the messages in my HMI. So for that I'm using DB2. Okay, using DB2 you can only able to influence the messages only. Okay, you cannot send signals like NCK compile signals. You cannot send you cannot send signals to NC or you cannot receive uh, you won't able to receive signals from NC. Using DB2, you can influence the messages only. If you want to change the messages, then you can uh, change it DB2 only. Otherwise, you cannot. Okay, Th these are free defined blocks for the cinematic CNC controllers. And we have DB10. So using this DB10, uh, this one is particularly allocated for NC. So in this DB10, we will uh, we will able to send signals to NC and uh, we will able to receive signals from uh, NC. And next one is HMI. So, uh, if you want to control HMI, if you want to send some signal to HMI, or if you want to receive some signal from HMI, then you should use DB19. For example, in HMI, 
uh, I'm just giving some offsets like that. I'm just saying for example. So DB19 is there. So using DB19, you can influence the HMI signals. Otherwise, you cannot. You cannot use DB11 for HMI signals because it is free defined. Okay, next one is Axis Spindle Drive. So in this Axis Spindle Drive, if you want to uh, send some signals to Axis or if you want to receive some signals from Axis, you should use DB31, 32 according to the increment. Okay, if you use three Axis Spindle, then it will be DB33. Then Axis will be four, and here DB34. So like that. So in this DB31, we will send uh, ready signals, uh, jog signals, move forward, move reverse, like that. So we, we're just going to control the axis spindle drive using DB31. Okay. Uh, you cannot control axis using DB22 because this is a particularly defined for this purpose only. So then uh, in DB71, 72, 73, we can able to manage our tool data. So like that, we have a lot of options, a lot of free defined data blocks and EFCs also. So using EFC, so this, this is a data interface and this is a function interface. Okay. Uh, in data interface, we will, uh, we will able to see the data. We can enable, disable, but in functions, we have some uh, requirements to enable the access. So like that, we can put in functions. Okay. And FB, see? In FB, using FB blocks, we can able to read, write, NCK variables, PA services, and read GUD, break test, relay. So a lot of options is here. So once you, you just go through the training manual or 840 ESL commissioning manual, you'll find a lot of details about how the PLC and the NCK is interfaced. Okay. You can download it on internet too. So no problem about that. Okay. So this is a basic interface. This is the overview and see you can see here so this is a plc nck interface for db10 so in db10 we have byte lot of bytes here up to 225 so they are so db10 is used for controlling digital nck inputs and uh, digital nck outputs so a lot of function is there in db10 so using db10 we can control this type of signals we can control and receive send and receive See, in DB10, we are connecting the handwheel, handwheel selection and HMI status signals. So, uh, like this, every DB has the particular functions. So, we need to use according to that. So, first, first of all, we need to study what are the data blocks available in Siemens Cinematic CNC and what are the functions of that data blocks. And uh, we can use it accordingly to our project requirement. Okay, here are, I'm just showing the some PLC interface signals, NCPLC interface signals. Mm -hmm. For example, we have, see, we have seen DB10. So DB, using DB10, we can send PLC to NC data. What type of data? So here we have signal for influencing the CNC inputs and outputs, key switch signals and pause weights. And NC to PLC, actual value of the CNC inputs, set points of CNC outputs. So like that we can, um, this type of signals we can able to monitor our write using db10 uh, in db21 see plc to nc control signal delete distance to go nc to plc nc status signals nc alarm active see in every db we have plc to nc and nc to plc so in every db we will able to read and write to cnc and uh, we will able to read from cnc we will able to write to cnc so that's what uh, is representing PLC to NC and NC to PLC. So using DB31, we will able to uh, send signals from PLC to NC. What type of signals? So here they have mentioned control signals to axis spindle and control signals to drive by 2021. We have to use what type of control signals? Servo enable, follow up mode like this. Um, so this is the overview of how the PLC and NCK is working, how they are speaking together. So using data blocks, they are speaking. So you should master this data blocks. 
then only you will be able to efficiently troubleshoot on the machine on especially Siemens cinematic controllers okay guys this is enough for this video we will see a lot of DBs we will uh, we will take a uh, particular DB special DBs and I'll explain in the later videos so thanks for watching if you like this video then share this video with your friends